Mr. Samir Brico, the chief executive of Amec, is joining us now. And um, you're a big uh, oil services company, really, with the operations running around the world. How important for a company like yours is it to be involved in this meeting? Well, first, uh, I see 90% of my clients are here today. I think that's very important for me. But I think also we have a lot to add to the discussion which is taking place. The relationship between the IOC and the NOC have been discussed for years and they are very crucial, let's say, for the future. It's about technology investment, it's about sharing the R&D, but also very important is about sharing the manpower which we need to be very careful about and what we need to nourish. Now, as you say, many of your customers are here, so that's good. But also, in the dialogue here, you get to, to deal with the OPEC members, the non-OPEC members, the um, organizations that are policy makers. So how is the landscape for the oil services companies in particular? Because you're, you're really, you're almost in the middle in a way. You're, very, you're the very vital link. I mean, if we take just an example, for instance, uh, 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 the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. is a net importer today, but because of the shale gas and because of the technology, it could be actually a net exporter. But the regulatory forms are not there. And that's the discussion which we are going to have here with the U.S. government, whether they should actually allow many of the corporates in order to be able to export uh, their gas out from the U.S. maybe to Asia. Because if you take the prices of the gas today of 2.2 or 2.3, uh, 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 dollars per unit and then if you will be adding a transportation cost and LNG cost that will be a less than six dollars that's very competitive with the fourteen dollars which Japan is paying today. Tell me what the relationship is like in terms of the NOCs, the IOCs and where you fit in. They want a much more sort of knitted partnership and where do the services company put in because you're, you are really the, the vital link in terms of making sure that that oil is coming out of the ground. I mean, we are used by both the NOCs and the IOCs, and sometimes we are using, uh, giving our services to both of them at the same time. What we do provide is a very solid engineering, uh, is also a good project management to ensure that we are delivering projects on time, on budget, but more important, with also thinking about the environment and keeping an eye that we are not losing the eye on the ball. Now, the challenges that uh, the producers and consumers deal with as well, how do they if impact your business? the general challenges that the oil industry faces? Well, I think it's a global challenge. I mean, it's very tricky today, and we need to think about how are we able to overcome these challenges when we have economical uncertainties in this world. At the same time, we have a, a population which is going to be growing up to 9 billion people, which definitely will need much more energy as we have been using up to now. The challenges are going to be, but how are we able to make an investment and secure the investment in order to be able let's say, to, uh, to extract the oil and gas in a safe way, and that's going to be a challenge for all of us. Now, of course, technology is very much driving this market, and a company like yours uh, would be using the best technology and really being at the forefront of it as well. How important, again, is that technology, and is the investment there from everybody, the investment being in the technology that's going to move the production? Well, I mean, indeed, if, if you would be going back and you see about how much money being spent by the service companies, how much money being served, I mean, uh, invested by the national companies and international companies, you would think, is that maybe enough or should we do much more than that? Uh, we have been having a number of breakthroughs lately, like the shale gas, uh, tight gas, tight oil and others, but actually we could do much more than that. And when we look at shale gas, tight gas, because we're probably going to be talking much more about that probably by the time we have another IEF conference, when we know a lot more about it, the technologies that there, it's, it's a very expensive process, though, still, partly due to you know, the tightness of the, the oil and gas and the technology. Do you really foresee maybe great developments in this side of the business? Well, I think so, because, I mean, today uh, most of the technology which has been deployed is hydraulic fracking, and this is nothing a new technology. It's actually 40 years technology. This is the drilling, which is a little bit new in that. But despite that, actually, there is a lot of uh, uh, people have been opposing that, and there are now a couple of places in the world, whether it is, has been in Europe, apart from Poland, uh, some places in New England, in Quebec, they have been, let's say, opposing on a hydraulic fracking, which means that we need to deploy a newer technology in order to be able to satisfy the, the, the demand and the aspiration of the consumers.